Hello YouTubers, this is Triple Seven Dollar Forever coming at you with another highly anticipated and highly recommended model as I continue to play catch up. Today I'll be doing a review on a Gemini Jets Air Canada Boeing Triple Seven 300 ER in their current livery scheme in a 1-200 scale model. I purchased this model from Easy Toys, who stores based out of San Diego, California, here in the United States of America, and the website address is www.easytoys.com. But first, before I go into details about this particular model, allow me to share you some information about the history of Air Canada, if you would please. Air Canada was founded on April 11, 1937, where it was actually originated from the Canadian federal government's 1936 creation of TransCanada Airlines, TCA, and commenced operations on September 1, 1937, with an electric aircraft carrying passengers and mail from Vancouver, British Columbia to Seattle, Washington then began operating their first transcontinental routes from Montreal to Vancouver on April 1st, 1939 using 12 Lockheed Model 14 Super Electras and 6 Lockheed Model 18 Lodestars as the airline operated under its original name until January 1st, 1965 when it was officially renamed to what has become known today as Air Canada. Air Canada is the national flag carrier airline for the country of Canada whereas the corporate headquarters of Air Canada is located at the Air Canada Centre, which is a seven-story building that's located along with the carrier's main hub and base of operations on the grounds of Montreal Pierre Elliott Trudeau International Airport, which is located approximately 12 miles southwest of downtown Montreal in the Montreal Borough of St. Laurent, while the carrier's other hubs are located at Toronto Pearson International Airport, located in Toronto, Ontario, Vancouver International Airport located in Richmond, British Columbia and Calgary International Airport located in Calgary, Alberta. And Air Canada also has focus city hubs that's located at Halifax Stanfield International Airport located in Enfield, Nova Scotia and Ottawa McDonald Cartier International Airport located in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. As of January 2019 or at the time this video review posting Air Canada is the largest operating airline in Canada based on fleet size and number of passengers carried as well as the world's 10th largest passenger airline carrier based on fleet size overall as Air Canada currently flies to 194 destinations worldwide on six inhabited continents. As Air Canada is currently one of nine airlines to own this actual distinction of permanently flying to all six inhabited continents along with Air China, British Airways, Delta Airlines, Emirates, Korean Air, Qantas, and Qatar Airways and South African Airways respectively with the operating fleet of 184 aircraft that includes 25 Boeing 777s in which 6 of those are the Boeing 777-200LRs and the remaining 19 are the Boeing 777-300ERs including this one you see here with no unfulfilled order depending on these aircraft types. Also as of January 2019 or at the time of this video review posting Air Canada is actually one of three North American based carriers along with JetBlue Airways and Porter Airlines that currently operates as a certified four star airline carrier according to the international airline review firm Skytrax magazine and the Boeing customer code for Air Canada for this particular aircraft is 33. Alright everyone, let's take a look at the front of the box here and at the top you see the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, you see the Air Canada logo the Air Canada title, the computer generated picture of the aircraft, the aircraft type, the 1-200 scale diecast aircraft model information as well as the item number information that's displayed at the lower part of the box. And now you're looking at the back of the box where you see the Gemini Jets information, the Facebook social media page information, the Boeing official product license decal you see there as well as the information about Air Canada at the lower part of the box. Now you're looking at the top of the box and you see the engraved Gemini 200 decal as well as the one information that sits on top of the box. And you're looking at the bottom of the box, you see all the little Gemini Jets information displayed at the bottom part of the box. Now you're looking at the left side of the box where you see the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, the one 200 scale diecast model information. And you slide over to the right on the left side of the box, you see the computer generated picture of the aircraft the aircraft type as well as the item number displayed on the left side of the box. Now you're looking at the right side of the box, the same information on the left side of the box I showed you earlier on, okay? 
All right. Now you're looking at the front of the box, but this time you get, I got it laid down here on the table, and I got in this position for a reason. And the reason is this right here. This is a flap. There's some information on the other side of that flap. Before I let you see that information, I'm gonna open it up and let you see what's inside of the box right there. As you see there, that's what's inside of the box. You see displayed there the actual model, the model stand, as well as the gear replacement doors. Okay, I'm gonna take that out in a minute, but in the meantime, I'm gonna let you see the information that's on the flap. Check it out. Now you're looking at the information on the other side of the flap, as you can see there, all the information about this particular aircraft. You can pause and read that if you like. In the meantime, I'm gonna keep this moving, all right? All right, after I took the, uh, the packaging out of the box this is what it looks like here the top part is partial uh, clear plastic and the bottom part is partial foam so I'm gonna take this top part off here and what you see there is a triple seven two hundred all the information right there in front of the plastic box there and this is what you see in its entirety the model the model stand as well as the gear replacement doors I'm gonna take all that out okay Okay, now I took this metal model stand out of the packaging box as you see it see there. And then you're looking at that black uh, pattern there, folks. The purpose of this black pattern is to prevent and protect your model from being damaged or scratched when you put your model on this particular model stand. Now you're looking at this plastic bag, and what you see in this plastic bag are the gear replacement doors, featuring the two little toothpicks for this particular model. Please stay tuned as I go into detail for the purpose of these gear replacements for this particular model, okay? Okay, with all that information out of the way about the history of Air Canada, all the details here on this box, as well as the information at the back of the box, the flap information inside of the flap, plus the partial packaging you see there, as well as the model stand that came with the model, as well as the gear replacement doors that's inside this plastic bag. With no further ado, everyone, here is the model out of the packaging box. Check it out. There it is, everyone, the Gemini Jets Air Canada Boeing 777-300ER in their current livery scheme in a 1-200 scale model. All right, allow me to go into some details about this particular livery scheme you see displayed on here, which I find very impressive. Air Canada decided to unveil its newest livery scheme at the airline's rebranding ceremony that was held on February 9, 2017 for its employees and customers across Canada at airports in Vancouver, Toronto, and Montreal simultaneously as the livery coincides with Air Canada's 80th anniversary as well as the 150th anniversary celebration of Canada's Confederation. This livery is also a reflection of Canada's heritage as well as its culture and its Canadian wildlife and although this livery somewhat brings back memories of Air Canada's very first livery scheme after it was rebranded from Trans Canada Airlines in 1965, the entire exterior look on this aircraft also resembles that of the medium-sized indigenous game bird called the Rock Tarmacan. And the first three aircraft that begun sporting this li current livery scheme look was a Boeing 787-8 Dreamliner which bared the registration ship number C-GHPQ, an Airbus A321 aircraft which bared the registration ship number C-GJWO, and a second Airbus A321 aircraft which bared the registration ship number C-GJWI. As these three aircraft were painted in secrecy sometime in January 2017 at the Dean Baldwin Aircraft Painting Facility at Grissom Air Force Base, which is located in Peru, Indiana, as the Canadian carrier expects to have their entire aircraft fleet painted in this livery scheme by the end of 2021. The Air Canada livery, including the red maple leaf rondelle logo, was created and designed by the international consultancy firm of Wynn Creative, whose global headquarters is located in Zurich, Switzerland, while the firm's creative center is located in London, England. So, with all the information out of the way about this particular livery scheme you see displayed on this aircraft, let's get down to the new degree and let me show you all the details on this aircraft. Miles Shuey, let's check it out. All right, now you're looking at this aircraft from the port side. We're gonna start at the front here where you see the front nose gears, the nose gear struts, the uh, nose gear doors right there featuring the fleet number right there, the Peter tubes and the static ports right there, the nose cone, the cockpit windows, as well as the windshield wipers. I'm gonna give you a better visual view of those later on in the model review. But more important, you see this uh, registration ship number right there, 732. 
And that, that number that's actually displayed on the nose gear door I just showed you is actually called the fleet number. And this particular number is also displayed on the tail fin of the aircraft as well. There it is. That's the fleet number displayed on the top part of the tail fin of the aircraft. All right, we're back at the uh, front of the aircraft here on the port side and between the cockpit windows and the L1 boarding door, which is right here. You, you see this decal right there. That is the Star Alliance decal. And Air Canada actually joined the Star Alliance along with Lufthansa, SAS Scandinavian Airlines System, Tire Airways International, and United Airlines as one of the five founding members on May 14, 1997, which consists of 27 airline members from five inhabited continents. And then underneath the uh, windows here and the, the business class windows here, there is the, uh, the airline's logo you see displayed there. This is Air Canada's current revised logo which is actually an updated version logo, logo, sorry about that, that was actually used from 1964 to 1992. It's actually called the Red Maple Leaf Rondell logo, in which the Red Maple Leaf is actually inside the symbol of the Rondell, which is actually known as a hockey puck. Now, this logo can also be seen on the underbelly of the air aircraft. I'm going to show you that now. There, inside the engine columns right there, as you can see right there as well as on the tail fin of the aircraft there awesome and you see the uh, air Canada billboard tile displayed up there on the upper part of the front part of the aircraft all right we're at the center of the aircraft here on the port side looking at the lower part of the uh, fuselage here and what you see there is the triple bogey landing gears here on the port side of the aircraft featuring the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear doors. But more important you see these big massive engines here featuring the engine cones right there. And these are the General Electric GE90-115B type engines that are used on this particular Air Canada Boeing 777-300ER jetliner aircraft. Now I'm going to turn this aircraft model around, let you see the front of the engines and the turbo fan blades do spin. Let's check it out. <laughs> Alright, now you're looking at the uh, front of the uh, engines here and the turbo fan blades do spin. Check it out. And you're looking at the inboard landing lights right there, as well as the front visual view of the landing bogey gears here on this side of the aircraft, featuring the uh, landing gear struts, as well as the landing gear doors. Now you're looking at the front of the engines here on the starboard side, featuring the engine strikes right there, and the turbo fan blade spin over here as well. Okay. And then you see the inboard landing lights right here on the edge of the wing, as well as the front visual view of the landing bogey gears here on the starboard side, featuring the landing gear struts, as well as the landing gear doors. Now you're looking at the uh, front of the aircraft, where you got a better visual view of the cockpit windows, the windshield wipers, you can barely see those, but they there, the nose cone, the nose gear door, featuring the nose gear taxi lights inside of the nose gear doors, the, the the, the nose gear struts as well as the front nose gears. Now you're looking at the rake wing tip here on the port side of the aircraft featuring the red navigation light right there on the edge of the rake wing tip as well as the strobe light that's displayed here on the, the end of the rake wing tip. Okay. Alright, we at the back of the aircraft here on the uh, port side where you see the uh, pressure relief valve right there. But more importantly, you see that Boeing 777 300 decal that sits next to the uh, L5 door. All right, Air Canada became the very first North American based operator that acquired the Boeing 777 300 ER into its fleet when it took delivery of its very first Boeing 777 300 ER jetliner aircraft, which bared the registration ship number C F. ITL on March 30, 2007, and took delivery of its last Boeing 777 300ER jetliner aircraft, which bared the registration ship number C FKAU on May 20, 2016. And at the time of this video review posting, all of Air Canada's 19 Boeing 777 300ERs are fully operating in service, as Air Canada is one of three North American based operators, along with Dallas Fort Worth based American Airlines and Chicago-based United Airlines that also operate this aircraft type in their fleets as well. 
Alright, we're still at the back of the aircraft here and what you see above the windows is the Canadian flag decal. And this particular flag decal represents the country where Air Canada currently operates from as the national flag carrier airline for the country of Canada. And right next to that Canadian flag decal is the registration ship number C-FITU. Registration ship number C-FITU. This aircraft is Air Canada's second Boeing 777-300ER jetliner aircraft that entered the carrier's fleet. And the first test flight on this aircraft took place on April 20, 2007 and was delivered to Air Canada on April 30, 2007. Now looking at the tail fin of the aircraft, I was playing all black. You see the fleet number as well as the uh, airline's corporate logo displayed there, which I mentioned earlier. And then you see the APU exhaust hole, a zero air power unit exhaust hole right here. And there is a hole one right there. And above the APU exhaust hole, that is the strobe light. Now you're looking at the Air Canada Boeing 777 300 ER in their current livery scheme from the rear view angle. Now you're looking at the front of the aircraft here on the starboard side where you see the front nose gears right here, the nose gear struts, the nose gear door featuring the fleet number on it, 732, the Peter tube and the static ports, the nose cone, the cockpit windows, the windshield wipers, the Star Alliance decal, the Air Canada title, the Air Canada logo, as well as the front cargo container loading door. Now you're looking at the inboard land lights right here, as well as the GE 9115B type engines right here, as well as the realistic uh, engine cones right there, as well as the side view of these triple landing bogey gears here on the starboard side, featuring the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear door. Now you're looking at the rake wing tip here on the starboard side featuring the green navigation light displayed there as well as the strobe light that sits on the edge of the rake wing tip. Now you're looking at the rear of the aircraft here on the starboard side where you see the rear cargo container loading door, the AFT bulk bin door, the Boeing 777-300 ER decal, the Canadian flag decal, the registration ship number, the airline's corporate logo displayed here on this black tail fan of the aircraft as well as the fleet number displayed here as well. Okay, before I show you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft model as well as the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft model, allow me to let you check out one feature which is the rolling gears. We're going to start right here. Uh, a little rough there, but it is what it is. At least the gears does tilt as well as the front nose gears it swivels as you can see there there and there so with that said allow me to show you the area of bird's eye view of this aircraft model let's check it out all right now you're seeing this model being viewed from the bird's eye view and we're going to start at the front of the aircraft where you see the nose cone the windshield wipers you can barely see them but they there as well as the cockpit window you see the star alliance decal on both sides you see the air canada title on both sides of the aircraft you see the anti-collision beacon light displayed there. Another high frequency antenna. The ADF antennas in 3D. The satellite communications antenna in right there. The Wi-Fi box in 3D. A couple more antennas. And then there's the um, vertical stabilizer right there is the tail. As well as the horizontal stabilizer. You see there with the two little dots over here as well as over there. The two little dots you see there on the edge of the horizontal stables are called illuminator lights and the purpose of these illuminator lights is to light up this tail here when it flies during nighttime. Now let's check out the wings. You see the wing walkway, you see the engines right there, as well as the flaps, slats, ailerons, spoilers, what have you. There's the fuel dump valve as well as the rake wing tips that features the strobe light on the edge of the rake wing tip on this side of the aircraft. Now let's check out this side, the wing walkway. You got the engines as well as the flaps, slats, aileron spoilers, what have you. And then you see the uh, fuel dump valve right there as well as the rake wing tip featuring the strobe light on the edge of the rake wing tip on this side of the aircraft as well. Now you're looking at the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft. We're going to start at the front here. You see the nose cone. That little deal there, I have no idea what that is. 
but um, you got the closed nose gear door and how it's mostly painted in black from this point on as well as the open nose gear door featuring the uh, fleet number as well as the front nose gear and then you slide up this way see the air can of the logo right there the, uh, the end collision beacon light the hole where the stand goes in at the Gemini Just logo a couple more antennas pressure relief valve the tail skid bumper okay the purpose of that tail skid bumper is to prevent this aircraft from being damaged when it takes off and land when it takes off and land at a certain angle okay and then there's the APU housing doors right there as well as the horizontal stabilizers underneath now let's check out the gears here you see the uh, the bogey gears here and they do tilt perfect okay and then you see the uh, the airlines logo on inside of the engine column there as well as the flat slats aileron spoils what have you see the fuel dump valve as well as the rake wing tip with the strobe light on this side of the aircraft now let's check out the gears over this side perfect and then you see the, uh, the the airlines logo on this side of the engine column there as well as well as the flat slats aileron spoils what have you Fuel dump valve as well as the rake wing tip featuring the uh, strobe light on the edge of the uh, rake wing tip on this side of the aircraft as well. Now, since I showed you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft mount as well as the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft mount in full detail, now I'm going to put it on that nice little metal model stand that actually came with the model. So no further ado everyone, here is the model on the stand. Check it out. All right, fine got this model on stand with no problem, no hesitation, no resistance whatsoever as you see in this model being displayed in the takeoff landing position with the model on stand being viewed from the port side. Now you're seeing this model being displayed in the takeoff landing position with the model on stand being viewed from the front view angle. All right, now you're seeing this model being viewed in a takeoff landing position with the model on stand being viewed from the starboard side. And finally, you're seeing this model being displayed in the takeoff landing position with the model and stand being viewed from the tail cam angle. All right, before I take this model to stand, I got in this position for a reason, and the reason is it's the magnetic retractable gears on there. I'm gonna take them all starting with the front nose gear, as you see they magnetic right there. The bogey gears here on the uh, port side there as well as the gears here on the starboard side you see there okay so with all the gears off here I'm gonna let you see this model view it at a different angle without the gears check it out all right now you see in this model being displayed with the model on the stand without the gears as you see it being displayed in in-flight mode position now you got one or two options how you want to display your model from this point on if you want to continue to display it like that in in-flight mode position without the gears that's fine now this little plastic bag I showed you earlier with the gear replacement doors in here that's the purpose of these gear replacement doors is to substitute your gears while you display your model like this in flight mode position or you can keep it in a gear down position with the gears on there your choice gears up gear down I prefer to keep mines on there because it adds more value to the model so with that said I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put these gears back on this model take this model stand and go ahead and wrap up this model review all right Let's talk about the seating configuration. Air Canada has two seating configurated versions that they actually use on their Boeing 777-300ER extended range version jetliners. However, on this particular Air Canada Boeing 777-300ER extended range jetliner aircraft, it seats 400 passengers in a three-class configurated cabin layout. Here is the breakdown, everyone, from rows 1 to 11, which will be from here to about right here. You have 40 business class seats in rows 12 to 14, which will be from here to here. You have 24 premium economy class seats in rows 18 to 64, which will be from here all the way back to the rear of the aircraft. You have an additional 336 economy class seats, which brings a total of 400 seats. And finally, Air Canada currently employs their Boeing 777 300 ERs on routes from Toronto to Beijing Capital, London Heathrow, Frankfurt, Germany, 
Munich, Germany, Vancouver, Hong Kong, Tokyo Haneda, Sao Paulo, Brazil, Zurich, Switzerland, Dubai, and Seoul, Ichion, and from Montreal to Paris, Charles de Gaulle, Frankfurt, Germany, and Rome, Fumicino, and from Vancouver to London, Heathrow, Toronto, Beijing, Capital, and Hong Kong. Well, everyone, this will conclude this model review. I'd like to know if you got this model or you plan on getting it. This model is still available for purchase. Snatch it up while you can. So with that said, take care. God bless. Stay tuned. There's more model content coming. Peace.